Let's jump into the Sacred Hunt event on the Isle of Sipta. Now in order to get this started, you're going to need to leave your base at night in order to get attacked by one of the followers of Jebelsog, and they are going to drop a handful of items for you. The gnarled fangs are what are most important, but if you open the satchel, there is also a map that's going to lead you to the location that I'm standing at. We are right in the middle of the map next to the tower. Now once you get up here, there are a couple of things that you can interact with. If you decide you don't want to get attacked at night anymore, you can talk to the bloody tongue of Jebel Sog and you can click I wish to leave the hunt. That is going to change the setting so that these enemies no longer spawn on you. If you decide at any point you want to rejoin the hunt, you simply come back to her and say you want to rejoin the hunt. Going through the other list of items that are there, you can learn more about the sacred hunt as well as the locations that you're going to need to visit in order to challenge all of the champions of Jebelsalt. I am going to show you all those locations in this video, so spoiler warning, that will happen. Now, if you're wanting to engage in the hunt, I highly recommend not even coming here until you have at least 12 gnarled fangs. The Gnarled Fangs are the currency that you use with the Master of the Hunt Trader. In order to partake in the hunt, you will need to buy the War Paint of Jebelsog, which we're actually going to buy two of because we have 12, and then you need the Champion Lure. Each Champion Lure will summon only one of the Champions. Now, if we look through the list of items that are on here, you can see there's also the potion of the hunt, and then we have quite a few scrolls. Now, these scrolls are going to take you some time to get that many gnarled fangs, and I'll go through and figure out what the best way is to accumulate gnarled fangs in a future video, so keep your eyes out for that. The Bestial Regalia is the new armor top that everybody's been asking about when I'm posting videos wearing it. It is a thousand gnarled fangs, so it's going to be quite grindy to get a hold of that, but it is very cool and something that you should aspire to get. We'll go over the potion of the hunt a little bit later on in the video. The first location that I'm going to take you to in order to fight a champion is the Elephant Graveyard, just north of the main tower. In the Elephant Graveyard, you'll find a handful of the gravestones and what you want to look for is this chest. On the other side of that chest, you will find this stone memorial. Put the champion lure in your hotbar and you'll be able to place that on the stone memorial. Now in order to do the highest possible damage you can to these champions, you're going to need to apply the war paint and then strip off all your armor. This is going to give you the challenger buff, and that buff is required to do massive amounts of damage to these enemies. We'll go ahead and place that lure there, and in a short amount of time, we should see the mammoth spawn there. Once you defeat the champion, it drops some things in its inventory, up to 20 gnarled fangs there, and then a brand of the mammoth. Obviously, 20 gnarled fangs is quite a bit. It's a lot more than what you're going to get if you're just being attacked at night. However, you are going to have to reinvest 10 of that right away just to be able to get another champion lure to move on to the next boss. The next location where you can face off against a champion is the Heretic's Haunt up here in the right-hand corner of the map. Just outside of the gates of the Heretic Haunt, you can find a, another stone memorial. Place the champion lure there, and then wait for it to spawn. Again, once you have it killed, you're going to want to take the brand and all of the gnarled fangs that it has. This one dropped 18 gnarled fangs. The last location that we're going to go is down here in E6. Now this is in between the spit and the dusk home. So it's this area here that you're gonna wanna look for on the map. And as we run through this area, we're just going to veer off to the left. This is going to be the Panther fight. And there it is there, materializing, and we'll engage in this fight. Now that we have all three of the brands and some gnarled fangs, we need to head back to the Jebel Sog hub. We're gonna buy another champion lure from him, and then if you went through all of the dialogue with the bloody tongue of Jebel Sog, you should have this recipe right here. So if we place all those items in there, we can craft the grand champion lure. 
Once we have the Grand Champion Lure, we can come talk to this guy again. We're going to trade with him, and we are going to buy a Potion of the Hunt. The Potion of the Hunt does have a short decay timer, so make sure you are ready to use it right away. This is going to send us into the final arena. You can see it looks familiar. It is a part of the Jebelsog Midnight Grove Dungeon, and... We're going to use that Grand Champion Lure right there, and that's going to summon the Grand Champion. There he is there. He's a were-bear. Aw, oh, so cute. So, engage in this fight. It's just like the other fights. You have to be naked, and you have to have the Challenger Warpaint on to do significant damage to this enemy. Okay, so once you have him destroyed, you can take his 41 Gnarled Fangs and head out. Something that I forgot to mention is to harvest the body of the main boss in here because he does drop a Tablet of Power. In order to head out, you leave it just like you would the Jebelsog Dungeon, just head down this cave and then interact with the floor. For this next step, you will have to have defeated a purge and received a barkeeper as a follower in that purge. Go ahead and set them at your tavern and you're waiting for Zil the Wanderer to show up. You're going to want to talk to him in order to learn another recipe and he's going to hint at a new location where you can go and engage in another champion hunt. Just interacting with him and clicking Learn Lure Corruption is going to give you the recipe that you need. Grab yourself another Champion Lure and head out to the Blood Mine in F6. Now you are going to have to fight your way into the back of this. Make sure you clear everybody out before you engage in this fight. That's pretty important. But you are going to find another memorial at the back end of this area. All right, so all the way into the back. We're not going to worry about that guy too much. We will find this memorial. We'll go ahead and place that there. And we should get another enemy to spawn here. There he is. Let's actually see if we can get him to attack anything else that's in the area. If we have anything that can make it down here. See if this guy will come down or he'll come up. A little bit of both. And yes, they will fight each other. So that's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and strip our armor off like we're supposed to for this fight. And, and do some damage to him. There we go. Bring him, bring him to me. So once you have this guy defeated, you can see we get a different resource. This is the Ancient Blood. We also get some Gnarled Fangs. So we're going to grab all of that. And we need to head back again to the Jebel Sog trade post. So as you can see, we have a new recipe for the Melodorous Grand Champion Lure. It is going to cost a Grand Champion Lure and the Ancient Blood in order to craft that. So you have to go through the process of getting all those brands again and then getting the Champion Lure again in order to make the Melodorous Grand Champion Lure. Once you craft that, you'll see it has a 24 hour decay timer. So you're gonna have to hold on to that for 24 hours until it expires into the Tainted Grand Champion Lure. Once you have the Tainted Grand Champion Lure, get another potion of the hunt and use it. All right, that brings us back to the Midnight Grove Arena here and we're able to place the Tainted Lure on there. The difference between the last fight and this fight, this guy is going to have about double the hit points of the last guy, so it is a bit more lengthy fight than the one before. You can also see he's got some pretty cool ghost effects on him, so it's a fun little fight. All right, once you have him killed, make sure you check his inventory. You can see he drops 53 gnarled fangs there, and he also drops the corrupted savage horn. The Corrupted Savage Horn has a 24 hour decay timer, so just wait for this to expire. Remember to harvest the body of the boss in particular. On both occasions, you will get a Tablet of Power. The Corrupted Savage Horn is going to decay into the Gura the Hunter Horn, and what we're gonna do is just place him out. You can see he is a Werebear follower, and he starts with 2,557 hit points. If you wanna interact with him, the groin area is the perfect place to do that, and if we look at his stats, you can see he starts with 10 in strength, two in vitality, two in grit. 
He's gonna gain 365 points per point in vitality, so he's definitely going to get a lot of vitality as he levels up. We'll quickly level him up to 20. You can see he went up to 8,769. And if we look at his stats, he has Mauler, he has right to bear arms, and then unflinching. He didn't gain a whole lot of vitality, but let's see if we can re-roll that with a Potion of Rebirth. I don't know if he'll use it or not. So definitely works with him to use the Potion of Rebirth to get some other perks in there. And you can see we got him up to 11,692. Let's see how he handles himself against some crocodiles here. We'll just send him off to attack those and see how he fares. All right, so not terrible in the damage department. You do see where he misses a lot of his strikes, so it's really only that first strike that's making much of any difference. And if he misses, where is he even going with that one? The guy's over here, bud. Yeah, so that first strike he does really well with, but then any subsequent strikes after that don't seem to be landing. Then it's all about wash, rinse, and repeat that process until you have enough fangs to purchase the different scrolls that are available. One of those being a scroll for the bestial regalia, which is the top that I'm wearing currently. Based on the comments that I've gotten when wearing this in my videos, I think it's gonna be a rather popular item for people to chase after. I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for their continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. Don't be out of whack. Click the video that's on the screen right now for more of my content.